In this video, we will identify what is an extraneous solution and find those as we solve more radical equations. Take a look at the following problem. If we solve this as we have in the past, by isolating the radical, which it already is, and then squaring both sides, what we end up finding out is that x is equal to 9. However, when we go to check our solution, we find that the square root of 9 cannot equal negative 3. This is called an extraneous solution, because the solution does not work in the original equation. All the math was done correctly, however, the solution still does not work. Please pause the video and copy this into your notes. Copy the problem down and try to solve it, being sure to check your answer and being careful of extraneous solutions. Since the radical is already isolated, we are going to square both sides. And on the left, we get 2x plus 8. On the right, we get 144. We're going to continue to solve this. Subtract 8 from both sides. When we do that, we get 2x is equal to 136. Next step is to divide by 2. When we do that, we get x equals 68. Everything looks fine. However, we need to check our answer. When we do 2 times 68 plus 8, we see that that does not equal negative 12. However, if you had looked at the original problem, we might have seen that we have a radical being said equal to a negative number. We know no radicals can ever equal negative numbers. Therefore, we probably could have seen that there was no solution to this from the beginning and not actually had to go through the algebra. Sometimes it's not quite so obvious that the solution will be extraneous. Let's take a look at another example. Copy the following problem into your notes and try to solve it. Hint, you might have to do some factoring here and rewrite your squared answer as a trinomial. Pause the video and complete the problem. Okay, so again, the radical is already isolated, so we are going to immediately square both sides. We end up with n squared is equal to n plus 12. In order to solve this, we need to subtract everything to one side, thus setting our trinomial equal to zero. We can then use our factoring techniques to factor our trinomial. When we factor our trinomial, we see we get two solutions, n equals 4 and n equals negative 3. However, when we check these solutions back to the original equation, we see that it is fine for 4 to equal the square root of 4 plus 12. That works. However, negative 3 does not equal the square root of negative 3 plus 12. because a radical can never equal a negative. Therefore, this is an extraneous solution, and we only have one solution. n has to equal 4. Please pause the video and copy the notes.